Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to share a few informations about what is Guatemala. Guatemala front yard or back yard. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. For many years, Guatemala and Honduras were nicknamed as the banana countries. The reason for this was the economic dependence of these countries on the banana plantations, which were a source of jobs and economic growth, according to the standards of the age. During the onset of Cold War, the government of the United States insisted on a politics of intervention in governments of Nicaragua, Honduras, Guatemala, and El Salvador. The reason for that political way was the uprising nuclear might of the Soviet Union. With the passage of years, such intervention on these tiny republics was justified before mass media by telling that the region was like the backyard of the United States. But what is Guatemala really like? Guatemala is the home of the most prolific Mayan population at all times of history. Back three to four thousand years ago, when Egypt was the dominant empire in the Mediterranean and Greece and Rome were nothing but a conglomerate of peasant tribes, the first Mayan state cities began to flourish. These kingdoms shared a basic linguistic matrix, common religion and a profound interest for astronomical calculations among other sophistications proper to high civilized culture. After surviving countless cycles of rise and fall, aggressions from other civilized states like Teotihuacan and Toltec, and the hazards of climate change, Mayan were finally conquered by European Spaniards, who imposed their social and religious ways on the native population. Then came countless episodes of discrimination and economic marginality, imposed by dominant minorities of European ascendance, and finally the tragedy of Cold War fell on Mayan population social fabric was tearing off and leaving a shadow of more than a quarter of a million peasants and poor people massacred in an internal armed conflict sponsored and fueled by both USA and the Soviet Union interests. In Guatemala survives a religion and a cosmological tradition that dates 30 to 40 centuries back in time. This religion is based on a strong belief that invisible forces control and patronize the events of life, the natural phenomena and the stability of Earth. A large portion of Mayan and mestizo population of modern time Guatemala do share this way of believing and dealing with common daily life hazards and successes. Mayan way of deciphering nature and the cosmos is complex it certainly cannot be reduced to a tiny set of words that declare them as living in the back or front yard of a foreign nation. Beliefs and convictions that have survived with little or no change for 30 centuries most certainly are not to be taken lightly. A good deal of respect and understanding is required on behalf of Mayan population. It is clear that many conflicts and pains arise at the zone where modern life encounters traditional ways of the mind. Alcoholism is difficult to eradicate due to its roots deeply buried with religious and social prestige thinking. With alcoholism coexists many social and economic instabilities. Alcoholism destroys families, promotes poverty, and finally destroys the health of both men and women. It is transmitted to new generations in the most imaginative ways, beyond the traditional ways of religion and social pressure. 
It is difficult to ascertain the nature of social situation in Guatemala. Guatemala is a society with a pyramidal structure. On top of this structure predominates a minority of influential population, whose main interest is existing in the most well-off situation possible. Rules for legal affairs, judiciary solutions, and financial games are set at this top of the pyramid structure. Living primarily at urban zones, there is another structure which constitutes a complex middle class that is precisely growing under the top structure of society. At the bottom of the social edifice comes the largest group of all Guatemala society, composed of both mestizo and native Mayan peasants and merchants. Inside this large section of Guatemalan population, there is an important group of entrepreneurs that help commerce march and permits the mobilization of agricultural goods from the beautiful countryside to the densely populated urban centers. Abandoned by political goals and craving to survive another century, there is the traditional Mayan society. This population needs to deal with basic equipment of modern life, such as the internet, hybrid education, work from home opportunities, constant learning and updating on the technical, legal and financial requisites of 21st century way of producing and mobilizing goods. Resistance to change from the old and healthy traditions and the rigid set of spiritual identity rules and scarce educational opportunities are tearing off the social fabric of Mayan society. The result of this rip-up on rigid social habits of the Maya and the fastest pace that is common at urban centers of production contribute to create a vacuum in the social structure. Such a vacuum is believed to be filled by mass migration and, in no few occasions, by affiliating to organizations that offer easy but too risky solutions to the affected Mayan and Mestizo peasants. Thank you very much. There is an important question that I have in my heart at this moment. What does Western civilization have to offer to present-day Mayan population? Mayan people have refused themselves in their traditions, in their cosmological ideas, in their religion, and in their traditional way of production. But as time passes, all this refuge, all this social edifice that actually protects the Mayan population is starting to crumble and to fall down. Let us help Mayan people. Let us help Mayan people to understand the changes that are taking place in this century. Thank you and till the next presentation.